question, which is 239 at 48, which is going to be 200 and, sorry, I'll get my pen to write. 287, I think, isn't it? 287 altogether. Let's go for option C. Next one is 589 minus 23. 589 take away 23. Let's just get Sahil to answer this one as he's just joined us. You okay, Sahil? Yeah, I'm okay. Good lad. And uh, do you want to give us an answer for this one? Yep. It's 566. Oh, good for that. Yep. So 566 is correct. Good. And the next one, 721 minus 199. All right, it's 522. So I'll just quickly go through these questions because these are fairly simple. Uh, the next one is 24 times 47. So you, you might have a, a certain way of doing these questions, but I'll just show you one quick method just in case. You don't have to do my method, by the way. I'm not sure which method that you do, whether it's grid method or classical method is fine. So seven times four is 28. So I just put the two on the side. Seven times two is 14, and two is 16. And then we just put a, a zero underneath. That means, and cancel seven. So we've done seven now. Now we're just gonna do four times four, four times two. So four times four is 16, put a six there. One is carried forward. And four times two is eight, add the one underneath. And that will be nine, so eight. Add six add six is twelve. Two goes there, one is carried forward, and then one straight after there as well. So I made it. Let me just do this one more time. Put the wrong number down there. So seven times four is twenty-eight. Seven times two is fourteen. Add two is sixteen. Put zero. Four times four is sixteen. One is carried forward. Four times two is eight. Add one is nine. It comes to 1128 as the answer. Okay. 1128. We just select D for that one. Okay, so divide 5876 by 5, work out the answer as a decimal, then choose the correct answer. Please work this out and tell me what the answer is. If we just work this out. Okay, hold an hour. Thank you. So this is kind of like as a decimal. Shall I show you how to do this one, just in case? So five, eight, seven, six, divided by five. So five goes into five once. Five goes into eight, into eight once, remain to three. So you put a small three there on the side. And five goes into 37, seven times because five times seven is 35, remainder two. Put the two next to the six to make 26. Five goes into 26 five times because five times five is 25. And then we have a remainder one, okay? Now, how do you turn that one into a decimal? Anybody wanna give me a hint? Anybody want to explain to me? Because that's that's the main gist of things. Let's go to Barbara quickly. Maybe you can explain your method. You can have a different method, uh, Barbara. It doesn't matter. How would you do this? Um, so since there's one, uh, so there's one left, and you're dividing by five, 
Uh, I, I guess it would come one over five, which would be zero. Okay. Point. Yeah, so you Maybe mean one over five? five? Yeah, one over five. So if yeah, you do so it like that's this, yeah, sorry. So you know the bottom number, put that on the left, and the top number goes in the middle, but you turn it into a decimal, all right? So how many times can five go into one? It can't, so put a zero there. And this decimal place comes up just there. Now, we need to join one and zero together to make 10. How many times can five go into 10? Two times, okay? And then this last zero, you just stick it at the end and it becomes 0 0.20. So what we do now is we get the answer 1175. We get rid of this remainder and instead we just put this, we just put that decimal there and this number at the end. And that gives us 1175.2. Okay, do, have, do come back and have a look at this video, by the way. Well, I'm going to put it up in the recorded section, just in case, and follow the same rule. If you don't do it this way and you've got a different technique on answering this question, that's fine. Please use it. If you're comfortable with it and you know what you're doing, I'm happy with that, as long as you know the method. All right? So good. Um, so that's the first one, which is A. And work out the decimal into a fully simplified fraction. So once you work this out, has to be in a fraction. So we know that 0 0.5 is half, right? Basically. And you can't simplify it any more than it already is. So C will be the correct answer. Work out the following decimal into a fully simplified fraction as well. So we know that 3 over 10 is the fraction. So 0 0.3 becomes 3 over 10. Can we simplify 3 over 10? No, we can't. So we're just going to go 3 over 10 as our answer. Okay. If there's something you want me to repeat, just uh, send me a message. Or just put your hand up. Don't be shy. I can always go over it again. Work out the decimal into a percentage, then choose the correct option. So 0 0.65, if you convert that into a percentage, then we know that it's going to be 65% because you know when you have 0 0.65 you have to multiply it by 100 because the percentage is always out of 100 so because 100 has two zeros then we just move the decimal point to right twice and that becomes 65% okay work out 0 0.7 which is a decimal into a percentage again is 70%. Okay, go for that one. And now look at the angle shown below. Estimate the measurement of the angle below. Estimate the measurement. So I would say that this is a full angle is 180 degrees because it's a straight line. And we know that a straight line always has 180 degrees. And if you're taking a like a, an estimate, we know that this here, this will be 90 degrees, right? So we know it's not 90 degrees, it's less than that. And I would say that it's 50 degrees roughly. Remember, it's an estimate, so it's about 50 degrees, which is the closest to our answer, I would say. Okay, the very close answers. I mean, you can easily get them wrong, 50 and 45, but I would go for the, for the um, slightly bigger number out of the two. Okay, and the next one, uh, an angle measures 50 degrees. So we have that 50 degrees again, same angle. Choose the correct name of this type of angle from the options provided. Does anybody want to give me uh, the name of uh, the different types of angles? Can you remember? Just uh, just volunteer, any, anybody, just put your hand up or just click the hand button there and I'll come to you. Different types of angles, what different types of angles do we have? So we have a right angle, what about the others? 
Hi Lena, go ahead. Hello. Okay. Um, and the acute angle is less than 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is more than 90 degrees and a reflex angle is more than 180 degrees. And there's one in the middle. Oh, uh, um, a right is? angle, which is 90 degrees. And there's one on top of the right angle as well. Do you know that one? No. I mean, so it says it triangle, but I don't... So I don't it comes that. in between... So we have the acute angle, you're right, which is less than 90. Mm -hmm. We have the right angle, which is exactly 90. And then we have an angle between 90 to 180 degrees. So reflexes between 180 to 360. But we yeah. have one in the middle. Obtuse. That's the one. Well done. Good girl. That's the one. Excellent. Okay, good. So what angle do you think this is going to be? It's going to be an acute angle because like Elena said, it's less than 90 degrees. Okay. And estimate and measure the line shown below choose the correct measurement um, so first of all to be able to answer this question you need to make sure that roughly speaking um, because it's an estimate you know are you using the right units because millimeters is just way too small so it can't be six millimeters and it definitely can't be six millimeters six point five millimeters because remember there's ten millimeters in one centimeter fourteen centimeters just looks a little bit too big so the probably the most appropriate one is B, 6.5, right in the middle, just to be in the, on the safe side. So well done, Noah. So measure the angle shown below. Choose the correct angle with the correct measuring units from the options provided. You can see that some of these options are wrong. So it can't be 35 centimeters, can't be 25 centimeters, because angles are always measured in degrees. And 70 looks a little bit too big. So I would, yeah, I would go for this one, 35. Okay, and work out the conversion of 50 centimeters into meters. So in this case, we know that um, in a one meter, we have 100 centimeters altogether. So when you convert, so half of 100 centimeters is 50. So what's gonna be half of a meter in this case? I think I might have accidentally given you the answer, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we'll go for uh, we'll go for 0 0.5 meters, okay, which is half a meter. This time around, we know that uh, there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram, so 1,000 grams in one kilogram, and work out the conversion of two kilograms into grams. So 1,000 grams is one kilogram, 2,000 grams is two kilograms. So in this case, we'll go for 2,000. There we go. And you've got a question here on sequence sequences. Have a quick go at that and tell me what you think. It's pretty quite easy. Because this is a first assessment that you're doing, I'm just starting off with some basics just to make sure that we don't miss anything when we're moving forwards into our course. Okay, so Sahil, you said that it's A, good, because minus five, um, once we go from minus five, we're gonna go to minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero one two and three good work out the area of the rectangle choose the correct answer with the correction with the correct units from the answers provided so to work out an area we just do width times height and in this case it's four times three which is 12 so it's going to be 12 centimeters squared From the list of numbers shown below, identify all the factors of 20. So factors are numbers that can actually divide into 20 without there being a remainder. Okay, so factors are all the smaller numbers that can divide into 20 without there being a remainder. All right, let's just go to Awa to answer this one. Are you there, Aura? 
no okay doesn't matter I'll come to uh, come to Elena oh sorry yeah it wasn't letting me unmute it um A Hi, Elena, are you there? Elena? Let me unmute you quickly. Yeah. yeah. Are you there? Okay, good, good. I lost you there, by the way. I think it's probably uh, the weather. I'm not sure what it is. But uh, let's just quickly uh, go through that question again. Okay. Is it raining where you are? Yeah. You're not far from me, you? <laughs> I'm talking like we're on the other side of the world. <laughs> That's funny. Right, let me just go back to that question again. I think we got cut off there. I'm not sure why. Yeah. So which question were we on? This one. This one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so in this case... Oh, wait. It was this question, wasn't it? I this one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So what are the, what's the factor of 14? Uh, um, A, I think. A? a. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's correct. Because 4 divides into 25 times, and then yeah. 10 goes into 20 times. So that's good. While you're here, Elena, stay here. Uh, mm -hmm. Do the next one for me as well. The next one is a multiple. Okay. Multiple is bigger number. So a multiple is a bigger number. Okay. Uh, which, which, uh, from the list of numbers below, give me two mm -hmm. numbers that are multiples of five. Um, ten and forty. Ten and forty is correct. Well done, Lena. Okay, thank you very much, Lena. All right, so round the following number to one decimal place, then choose the correct option. So 15.72, uh, if you were to round it to one decimal place, it will become 15.7. So we just eliminate the two at the end because it's closer to 15.7 than it actually is to 15.8. And the next one is round the following number to one decimal place. So in this case, 0 0.08, and then we have a 9 at the end. So let me just show you. So either this number is going to go up and down, all right? But to be able to do that, we need to look at the number at, after the one decimal place. And that's 9. That's more than 5. So that will then become 0 0.09 to one decimal place. Okay, because after the decimal here, we have a zero. So here we have a zero. We can't actually move the zero up, can we? We can't move it up, we can't move it down. So we ne next, then needs to go to the next number, which is eight. And only eight will go up and down. So in that case, we'll go for 0 0.1 as our answer, because we're just rounding it up um, to the next big number. So work out the fraction, then choose the correct option. How would you do that? Uh, 
how do you think that could be done? So it's just four over five, add the two top numbers, the denominator is the same anyway, so you don't need to do anything spectacular, so it's just four over five. And again, this one, subtraction fraction, very simple, because the denominator is exactly the same. The de denominator, you don't need to find a common denominator because the denominator is exactly the same. So five take away three is two, and then denominator will be seven, so the answer is two over seven. What is the name of the shape shown below? Got various triangles, and because this is quite equal in a sense, so all the lines are exactly the same that you can see here. So it will be, uh, let's go and ask Sahil what answer this is going to be. Hi Sahil, are you right? Sahil, are you there? Yeah, yeah, sorry, it got out. Okay, yeah, sorry, that's right. What do you think? I think it's an equilateral triangle because all the sides are equal. Well done, Sahil, thank you so much. And this will be an equilateral triangle because all the sides are even. And the next one, what is the name of the shape shown below? What do you think? You just count off the sides for the shape. It doesn't matter what the shape is, um, just count off the sides. So let's just count this up quickly and see what we have here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's a strange looking hexagon, but uh, it will be an irregular hexagon. Now, why do we call it irregular? Because you know what a regular hexagon looks like. Regular hexagon is something like this, where all the sides are pretty much even. But in this case, because the sides are uneven, that's why it's called irregular hexagon. And it says, work out the volume of the stacked cube shown below. Each cube is one centimeter cube. So when we measure volume, volume is always measured in either centimeters cube or meters cube and so on. And the reason for that is because when it comes to volume, we, we times the height by the width times by the depth. Can you see we have one? to three units that we're using. And that's why we have the small cube sign at the end. That's where the cube sign comes from. Whereas if you were just uh, working out area, area would be width times height, and you have two measurements, and that's why you have centimeter square with a small two on the top right hand side. Okay, so in this question, it just says work out the volume. So what we're going to do is, because we don't have any measurements, we don't have any width, we don't have a height, we don't have a depth. All we're going to do is we're just going to count up the, the, um, the cubes because that's all we can do. So one, two, three, four. So it'll be four centimeters cube. Okay, have a look at this one. Work out the volume of the stack cubes in this one. How many cubes can you actually see, uh, roughly speaking? How many do you think? Um, I think seven centimeters. Yeah, so because there are no measurements in a question like this, when you don't see any measurements, just add up the cubes. So seven centimeters cubed is the correct answer. Well done. Okay, look at the image below. Choose a fully correct description of the transformation of shape A to shape B. Okay, I might need a bit of help with this one. So let me just uh, explain to you how I do it. And then you decide if this is something that you can go with, or maybe you might have a slightly different approach to this question. So we have around about 15 minutes left of the lesson, which is fine. Look at the image below. Choose a fully correct description of the transformation from A to B. So we're going from A to B. A to B, okay? So now, let's have a look at this. 
what we do first of all is we go right or left. That's the first thing we do. Do we go right or do we go left? And then do you go up or down? That's number one. This is number two. So because the number one approach is to go right or left, remember we're going from A to B. So I'm gonna choose this corner of this shape. Now follow me how I go from this corner to the shape. So let's have a look at this. So one, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So now I'm going six to the right. And now let's go up. One, two, three, four, five. Can you see that corner there? And this corner here? So it's six over five. Okay, so six to the right and five up. Six boxes to the right and five up. Let's see if we have a, a corresponding answer to this question. So we have translation of six step boxes. Uh, where's the answer going? There we go, right at the bottom, D. So translation of six boxes to the right and five boxes upwards. Okay, that will be our answer there. Look at the image shown below, choose the correct picture showing the reflection of the shape A to B. So this is like a reflection question. The previous question was translation, where we pick up a shape and we kind of move it to certain boxes. Um, let's just move this down so you can see properly. So what's gonna be the correct reflection there of A? Be careful, make sure that the distance is exactly the same from A to B. Okay, Awa, you're saying it's B is the correct reflection uh, and you're absolutely right, well done. And uh, let's have a look at the next one. So this one says, um, present below, uh, presented below is a line graph showing the sunflower's growth. It was planted on a Saturday 30th and its height was measured every two days. On which day was the sunflower six centimeters in height? On which day was a sunflower six centimeters in height? Anybody want to have a go at this one? Okay, uh, let's go to Elena. Put your hand up first. Barbara, I'm going to come to you on the second question. What do you think, Elena? Um, Thursday the 11th. Thursday the 11th. Let's have a look. Thursday the 11th. Just there? Yeah. Just there, right? Yeah. Good. Okay, that's the correct answer. Well done. And for this one, Barbara, I'll come to you. Okay, so presented below is a line graph showing the sunflower's growth. It was planted on Saturday the 30th, and its height was measured every two days. Between which two dates was the sunflower exactly half the height of its final recorded measurement? So uh, its final recorded measurement is 20 centimetres. So half of that would be 10 centimetres. And it remains at 10 centimetres between the days Wednesday the 17th and Friday the 19th. Yeah. So if you look here, you're saying that 20th, is this what you're saying? That 20 is yeah. the last day, right? Now, yeah. what you're saying is half of 20 is 10. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, there. And then when we look at the, when we kind of plot the um, actual line, 
Okay, I've actually removed the line now. Let me just put it back in place. When we put the plot the line, it will come right down to basically Wednesday the 17th. Is that right? Barber? Yeah. 17th and 19th. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, because this is the halfway point. And when we're at the half point, halfway point, sorry, that's exactly where we're going to go. Wednesday, 17 to 19, because we have this particular area here, which is exactly halfway and halfway of 10, whereas the full measurement was 20. So that's correct. So the answer is going to be 17th and 19th. And Barbara, while you're online, have a look at the next one as well. All right, so it says, what, what was the difference in height between Thursday 11th and Wednesday 31st? Yeah. So the height of Thursday 11th was six centimeters, and on Wednesday 31st, which was the final day, it was 20 centimeters. So you do 20 centimetres minus 6 centimetres, which gives you 14 centimetres. Okay, so Thursday the 11th and Wednesday the 31st, right? Yeah. There we go. And what did you say, sorry, after this? So you have to do 20 centimetres minus 6 centimetres to find the difference, which is 14 centimetres. Because this is why we do 20 take away 6, you guys, if you can see this, is because... 20 is up there and six centimeters is down here. Okay, next, Barber. Yeah, and then you do 20 minus six, which gives you 14. 14, yeah. And 40, 14 centimeters will be our answer, right? Yeah. Well done, well done. good. Okay. There we go, let's select 14. So we have two more, last two last questions to go with this lesson. So Ross and Rachel watch a film, which is 150 minutes long. The film finishes at 7 p.m. and has played all the way through without breaks. Convert 150 minutes into hours and minutes and then choose the correct answer. So do you remember that in one hour, we have 60 minutes. In an in another hour, we have another 60 minutes. That comes to 120 minutes. And then 120 add another 30 minutes comes to 150 minutes altogether. So it's one hour, two hours, and then half an hour. And that makes up two hours and 30 minutes. So we'll go for D as our final option of two hours and 30 minutes. And the last question for the day, uh, Ross and Rachel watch a film, which is 150 minutes long. The film finishes at 7 p.m. and has played all the way through without breaks. Again, at what time did the film start this time around? Does anybody want to volunteer for this question? So the last question. Okay, so let's go to um, let's go to Sahil. Huh? Hi, Sahil. Hi there. So the film lasts 150 minutes long, and it finishes at seven. PM. So we know that 150 minutes is two hours and, th and 30 minutes. So yeah. seven o'clock minus two hours is five o'clock, and then minus the 30 minutes, which would be four a 4:30 PM. A. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's that's a good analysis. I mean, you can do it various ways, whatever you find easy. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's a, a pretty good explanation, actually. Yes, that's good. So 4:30 will be our final answer in this case. Okay. So, yeah, so well done. And let's just go to Mide quickly, make sure she's okay.
Mide, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. What are you doing, Mide? Are you floating around in space somewhere? I can't see you. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay, good job. Did you, uh, did you get some of these questions we went through? Yeah, I got the questions right. And the questions that I got wrong, um, I did go over them and you did explain them um, over okay. again, which makes more sense. Cool. Did you do the, um, did you do the homework for this, Mide? Pardon? Did you do the homework for this? Yeah. Okay, good, good go. And this kind of made more sense. And by the way, um, I just want to let you know that the, the lesson is going to go up into the recorded class side. So okay, you can go okay. into the recorded section and you can go over it again if you want to, if you, if you need more information or just as a, as a review for one more time, okay? Okay, thank you. So this applies to everybody. Okay, good. All right, so thank you very much, everybody, uh, for this lesson. And I will send you, thank you, I will send you um, some homework later on tonight, which will be done for Sunday. It's not much. Uh, it's just some English work to do. Um, and that will be due in for this Sunday at 9 p.m. Right. So look after yourselves. Take care, and I'll see you on. Uh, I will see you on Sunday. Thank you. Bye bye.